I have been fascinated with the unknown and paranormal realms since childhood. After a profound experience with my grandmother's spirit 20 years ago, I have been on a quest to observe, study, investigate, and communicate with the afterlife and beyond. It's been an ongoing journey of exploration and discovery, one that has taught me how mortality and the spirit world are forever bonded through the veils of time. Welcome to another episode of the Afterlife Chronicles and Beyond. Tonight is Thursday, April 29th. It's already almost May of 2021. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I am your host, Nicole Strickland, on the WLTKDB network. That's WLTKDB.com. You can join us right there in the chat room on the main page. You can use Facebook to do that. You can also get to the site by visiting theletstalk.com. Hope everyone's doing well tonight. There's a little bit of a sound in the background. So there it's, you know what? Not trying to win any awards here, folks. But when it's hot, you need a fan. So hopefully it's not uh, too loud for everyone. Anyways, I want to make a couple of announcements before I bring in tonight's guest. So SpaceX is being brought to Long Beach, folks. So I guess they're using part of the marine terminal there to, uh, it, or in the port of Long Beach, I guess, for the uh, West Coast recovery operations. So that should be interesting. I am really hoping that, you know, it might, I'm hoping that it will help the Queen Mary in some way. Not that the ship needs help, but maybe bringing more attention to the ship and to Long Beach in general. Uh, also, Paranormal Underground Magazine. I know a lot of you know that I write for the magazine. It's a tremendous magazine, one of the best, if not the best magazines on the supernatural and paranormal. And I am very happy to announce that I am this month, or actually I think the month of May's uh, featured person for the investigator spotlight. So I'm really looking forward to that. It should be coming out shortly. You can visit the website at paranormalunderground.net. So let's get to tonight's guest. I'm looking forward to having him. He is a five-time, I believe, five-time Virginia Press uh, award winner for his journalism. That's fantastic. He's a uh, an addiction recovery counselor. He's also an author, and he's written his book, Ghosts and Me, and of course, is very interested into the paranormal. So I want to welcome Kevin Killen to the show. How are you doing, Kevin? I'm doing fine, Nicole. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So what's up with you lately? A little paranormal stuff. I actually uh, was working on my my new project, which is going to be Battlefield Ghosts. Oh. I was at Antietam today. And oh, it really? Did not disappoint. Oh and I haven't gosh. even gotten to my audio yet because honestly, the spirit screwed with my audio. Um, yeah, my tape recorder kind of went crazy towards the end there, but I got a lot of other other things with, without the audio. So I'm really excited to. So, to play more my or audio, less so. like personal experiences and a, yes. that sort of thing. Yes. Oh, my gosh. And, and, uh, Antietam did not disappoint. And it's a beautiful place. It's a sad place, but it's beautiful. And, and I was glad to go. And I thanked them for having me. And they, they, they came out and, and they joined me. So I'm hoping they can uh, they talk to me. So we'll see. That's amazing. You know, you said something. You said you thanked them for having you. That is so respectful. And that's something that I really believe in. And I do believe that the more respectful you are with the energies, the better results you will get, whether it's objective data or even uh, subjective data. So that's awesome. How would you compare Antietam to Gettysburg? Because I have yet wow. to, to go to both. I mean, uh, that's badly. actually a really good question. I've been to Gettysburg twice, uh, not on investigations, just as a, as a just to go see the battlefield. Um, as a matter of fact, it's interesting because I actually, actually had to do a little bit of a curve here because of the COVID, and I was going to go to Gettysburg to finish my book. But unfortunately, that's not going to happen. So hopefully, I'm going to be able to do a part two, and I will get to Gettysburg. But I actually had to supplant it with another uh, battlefield down here closer to me in Virginia. But uh, at Gettysburg and Antietam just have an incredible energy. And it's just what you know you're there. Like when you go there, it's just the energies. They And again, with people like me who are empathic, uh, they, they, they know. 
they, you know, the spirits know. Right. And the absolutely. Minute the, the minute you hit the, the, the ground there, you know, they'll, they'll come right at you. So, um, both places are tremendous and I can't wait to go to, uh, Gettysburg to actually do an investigation this time. Oh, that's fantastic. I actually might be joining the ghost research society in August of this summer, uh, nice. for Gettysburg. So I'm really hoping to make that trip. I, it's literally like in the top three places I want to visit. So yeah, it's definitely a bucket list. If you, if you have like mine is Queen Mary's bucket list for me. Yeah. So, yeah. So Gettysburg we'll cross each me. other somewhere in like <laughs> Chicago. You know, right, I know. Queen Mary, you'll come to Gettysburg. Right, exactly. <laughs> awesome. So let's talk about some of your earliest paranormal encounters, because I know that you mentioned that you have several back when you were very, very young. Sure. If you want. Sure. Oh, Not forcing you. No, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Like I said, I, I love doing these shows because uh, paranormal, I love to talk about the paranormal. Not just to promote my book, but just to see other pick everybody else's brains out there and just to discuss the paranormal because I, I still have a lot of people around me or near me that are kind of on the fence and I really can't talk to them about it. So I love doing these shows because it actually is such a great platform. To do right. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. I have such a blast doing that. So uh, yeah, you don't have to twist my arm. <laughs> <laughs> so, you don't have to twist mine either. Not at all. So my first experience was when I was about five years old, I was living outside of Chicago in a place called Evanston, Illinois. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a big rambling old 19, I think 1900, 1901, just big brick building uh, that we lived in. Um, and my father was a journalist, <clears throat> excuse me, he worked for UPI at the time, and, and he covered sports every once in a while. So he'd take my older brothers to, mm-hmm. to him, with him every once in a while, just kind of get out of the house or whatever, and left me and my mother by ourselves because I was, you know, little. So this one particular night, I think they went to St. Louis uh, for a tournament or something. So it was just me and my mother. And we were downstairs in what I guess you would call the foyer area or the mm-hmm. living room, whatever. Um, we had the big big staircase that led down to the landing, and then you had the living room in front of you. Well, we were sitting down there eating dinner, and I distinctly remember hearing footsteps upstairs, like walking across the wooden floor, like distinctively. And I turned to my mother, and I said, who's that? And my oh mother my gosh. said to me, it's my little boy. And, you know, of course, being five, I was like, well, I'm the only little boy in this house. What is she talking about? So I, I just kind of put it out, you know, how kids do. You put it out of your mind for a while. And uh, but I distinctly remember, that, yeah, the wooden steps. My and later on, my mother said that she had told me that because she was afraid somebody broke into the house and she didn't want to scare me because she was scared herself <laughs> because again she thought somebody broke into the house. Yeah, and, uh, exa- yeah, that can be quite scary. Now, did yeah. she ever have experiences prior to that, or was that her? She, she, no, she did. She did. My mother, I think, had sight. Yeah, um, but she, yeah. she she didn't talk too much about it, and unfortunately, she's passed now. And and I wish I had kind of prodded her a little more about her experiences prior to me being into the paranormal, because I think she really she she did have some, but she never she very rarely talked about it, unfortunately. And like I said, I think she did have the sight because uh, mm-hmm. there's some things that you know they always say mothers know, and it's yeah. true. But she it's had true. mothers know times ten, so <laughs> there was something else going on. I'm pretty convinced. Yeah, I get that too with uh, my maternal side of the family. So, understand you on that. So, uh, so moving on. So, uh, after that, what are some other experiences? I mean, it sounds like you had that one experience and then others just followed because I know that happens for a lot of people. Yeah, kind of with me, um, I think subtle things happened to me up until right after high school. Um, basically, when I hit high school, we'd actually moved from Chicago to Virginia uh, in my childhood home of Falls Church. Um, and that was built in the 40s or whatever. But I, I really kind of got into the paranormal back then pretty heavy as a, as a freshman and a sophomore in high school. I'd actually had a lot of friends who were from other countries, and they used mm-hmm. to tell me their ghost stories. And those were so fascinating because it was like, oh, my God, you know, we, th- we think we believe in stuff. But I had right. friends from Southeast Asia who obviously the Vietnam War and Korean War, things like that really tremendously affect them. So they had some awesome stories. And actually, that might be maybe something for another book. I, I don't know, because I, I they had some great stories. Um, but anyway, I, I would I read it. That. I don't, do you, 
Thank you. Well, at least at least one person would. That's, that's, that's <laughs> no that's more than one. That's I can a, tell you that. That that's a start, Nicole. Thank you for your support. I appreciate that. Of course. Um, but do you, do you remember the? Um, um, oh, jeez, it was just I just missed it. Um, oh Lord, unsolved mysteries with Robin yes, Stack coming out of the fog in the trench yeah, coat. Yeah, okay, absolutely. Okay, well that was really big. Remember in the '80s, so I was just starting high school, and I used to watch that for the ghost stories. Mm-hmm. And I always remember my first encounter with the in Chicago, and I was always fascinated. And, and me and my friends would usually go to the library and read whatever books they had, and we'd swap them out and give them to each other. And usually, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Daniel Cohen at all. Yes, but but he was he was one of the first ones I read, and of course Hans Holzer, I read everything that he put out. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. That that fantastic were, read. Yes, mm-hmm. those were like the two top that I can re- remember that we used to like read like religiously. Right. So, um, so I started. Uh, I read a book um, by. I, I always get this guy's name wrong. Constantine Rod- Rodive Rodive. I think. Yeah, I think you know what? It's Constantine Rodive, I believe, Is but don't. Rodive? Yeah, I think it's Rodive, but I, I, I don't quote me on that. Well, I, when I read his book, it was fascinating because he basically got EVPs when he wasn't trying to capture them. Right. He was going out in the forest in the woods out there, and he was getting all these things, these voices and everything. So that really fascinated me. So that's when I started kind of getting into some EVP. Um, and I didn't get too much early on, but about a year out of high school, um, I, I my, my house – So oh, it looks like we may have a little bit of an audio connection problem. So let's see here. Um, Let me. Oh, there you go. You know what? You okay. just. Yeah, I don't know if you went on mute or yeah. Repeat the last like maybe twenty seconds of what you said. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um. Also, let me preface this by saying that usually when I do these shows, the spirits do like to join in, and that's what they do. They have a tendency to 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 jump in here and say, "Hey, I'm here." So yeah, any technical difficulties are usually them. But <laughs> well, I'm just anyway. saying. You know what? Just be quiet for the hour until <laughs> until well, it would be until ten p.m. your time. Tell them that I, I, from me. I, I try to. I, try to do that. I, <laughs> I know. I'm kidding. That. I'm yeah. kidding. But, I'm kidding. But no, usually I usually do have technical difficulties. Um, so, anyway, as I was saying, um, up until you know, throughout high school, I, I would try to the EVPs. I didn't get to. I didn't get really much of anything until. Um, I was about a year out of school and I was saying that, you know, we had a lot of foot traffic from friends and this and that. So we had a lot of energy in that house. And, and I lived in a very sad house because um, there's a lot of substance abuse issues. So it was, and I describe it as sad because it really, to me, that's the feeling that I got was it was a very sad house. We had a lot of negative energy in that house thinking back mm-hmm. on it now. So, well, so I was just sitting there one day, one night and, and I had, if you remember back in the day, they had the big boom boxes with the detachable mm-hmm. speakers, double double tapes. Yeah, and for all you young youngsters out there, we did have these things called tapes. <laughs> all good. All some people still use them. Stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> I wish I could because I, I got some of the best results using those, more so than the digital. Um, but anyway, I decided, hey, you know what? I'm I'm here. No, but no. And this was like one of the first times in a long time nobody was in the house but me. So I decided, okay, I'm gonna do an EVP session. So I went ahead and did the, you know, play and record. And I asked the spirits. I said, hey, if there's anybody in here, show me. And I went to a friend's house for about an hour, hour and a half. Came back, rewound the tape. I didn't really get anything, you know, the white, typical white noise until about the last three, four minutes. I got like, first of all, it sounded like there was some drumming, like somebody was pounding on top of the machine. And that was weird because, again, nobody was in the house. Then I got some blips, blips and bleeps. I don't know what that was. The final five seconds of that tape, I had this really what I called demonic sounding voice that said, I have shown you, ha ha. And, of course, I fell out of my chair and ran downstairs, scared out of my wits. People thought I was on crack. It was a whole thing. But nobody was in the house. At the time, and, and unfortunately, my tape got eaten because I tried to rewind it, and it got eaten by the machine, so I had really no proof that this actually took place. But, you know, that, that, that stuck with me till to this day. I can hear that voice in my head. And, you know, I mean, sometimes, like, I mean, I've had EVPs where they sound very robotic. They sound kind of like what you said, where they're very raspy, almost that 
a demonic type vocalization, but it may not have been. It may, I'm, you know, that's, I would say that that's extremely rare. It may have been right. some sort of positive message for you. Maybe you didn't know at the time. Maybe it was meant for you to, to try and figure out maybe at a later date. I don't know. Just throwing that out there. No, that actually makes sense. And I actually was thinking about if I had any, any relatives that were jokesters. <laughs> I, I firmly believe that you take your personality with you in the afterlife. So if you were a jokester in life, you're going to be a jokester in death. Right. But I really didn't have any on that side. Really, most of, most of mine were kind of angry. So, But, yeah, I don't, I don't think it was demonic either. It was just, it, it, like you said, it came out as a very raspy, low, guttural voice. And it, I don't believe it was demonic at all. It was just that's how just it Just sounding like that, right. Right. But that was my first EVP. And like I said, that, that stays with me. And that, that's one thing that with the paranormal, you talk to anybody, it's a life changing thing. When you it have is. experiences, you, you never forget that. And your mm-hmm. life has changed the rest of your life, whether you want to deny it or not or embrace it. But it definitely changes you. That's so true. I mean, when you talk to paranormal researchers, I mean, 99.9%, I will say, will always share how it's been like one or maybe even a culmination of uh, uh, experiences that, you know, fueled their interest in the paranormal. I mean, I know for me, that's the case. So, Um, yeah, so that that's fantastic. So moving on, uh, I mean, you kind of already answered this, but those early experiences and even the ones that you're now experiencing in terms of paranormal encounters, are they changing your viewpoints at all uh, on the paranormal spectrum in the afterlife? Or is it pretty much, you know, kind of what you thought before is what you think now? Um, yeah, I, I think, honestly, it's, it's kind of the same. Um, mm-hmm. and, and for instance, I'll, I'll give you a for instance. Um, with me, it's cyclical. And what I think with most people, it's cyclical as well. Um, this past week, I think you, you, you may or may not have known the moon. Yeah, uh, the the big pink moon or super moon or whatever it was called, but it was beautiful out here. And usually, and people think that I'm crazy, which that's okay, that's debatable. <laughs> but <laughs> when we have full moons, the energy is is increased and it increases activity as it, as does crime. And this has been proven. I, I actually have a justice degree. This has been proven about the moon phases and cr- and criminal activity. Same mm-hmm. thing with the su- uh, supernatural. Paranormal, same thing. When there's a full moon, it seems to the energy build up, and there's like more increases. Like I said, and that's usually what happens with me. Um, and certain times of the season, like October, September through November, for me is like a really heightened season for me, and it's always been that way. I think so. I was born around that time, but it's not because of Halloween that helps. But it's just that's always been a very special time for me, and I find a lot of energy is really strong around that time. Um, I would say, yeah, that makes sense for someone's, you know, birth month. Absolutely. Yeah. That would be a unique study to do, actually. You know, take uh, not just in the U.S., but around the world and, and uh, interview people and see if maybe some of their encounters are stronger or maybe more prolific around their birth month. I think that that would be a really good oh, study wow. to do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it'd be hard to do, but I think it could definitely... Um, yeah. be done so anyways uh, hold your thoughts we're going to take a quick break and we'll come right back you are listening to the afterlife chronicles and beyond i am your host nicole strickland on the wltk db network stay tuned folks Our Medic Alert bracelet warns first responders that we kiss back during CPR. Pucker up, buttercup. We are controlling transmission. WLTK DB. Let's talk. Alternative Talk Radio. WLTKDB.com. Ever wanted to host your own radio show? If your answer is yes, then the time to act is now. WLTK-DB Let's Talk is now accepting new programming more affordable than ever. You create the show idea and we'll take care of the rest. Not only do we create your program intro and provide broadcast training, but also syndicate you to popular outlets like Apple and Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and more. You get all of this starting at 
at $100 per month. Three packages to choose from and built to make your wallet happy. Contact us at WLTKDB.com with your show idea and let's bring your dream to life. All topics accepted and you have full rights to your program. Contact us today and reserve your spot on WLTKDB Let's Talk. What are you waiting for? Let's do this. Twenty-one minutes past the hour, you are tuning in to the Afterlife Chronicles and beyond on the WLTKDB network. If you haven't joined the chat room, now is your chance. You can join on the main page. Tonight's guest is none other than Kevin Killen, five-time uh, award winner for his, uh, or what was I going to say, five-time, hello, brain fart. He's won an award five times for, what was it, Virginia Press, I think it was. Oh my gosh, what is wrong with my brain tonight? Huh. He's an author of Ghosts and Me and, of course, a paranormal enthusiast and an addiction counselor. So that's quite a spectrum there. So we've been talking with him about some of his earlier uh, paranormal encounters and how that kind of fueled his interest as he got older. So we're going to continue on with that. Thank you for joining me tonight, Kevin. Um, you mentioned that you had some profound spiritual experiences after the death of a loved one. Is that correct? Are you willing yes, to share uh, those yes, at all? Absolutely. Some people aren't, absolutely. and I and I totally respect that. But if you are, no, that actually, would be great. I, I think what I went through actually was part of the journey, and this mm. is what I consider this whole thing is part of a journey. I was actually meant to do all these things, and this thing is part of my makeup. Beautiful. Um, continuing to to the end, which hopefully will be a long, long time from now. Um, <laughs> my mother um, passed in 1997, and I was a uh, junior in college at the time. And even though we, we, mm. we didn't always get along, um, she I was the baby boy, and I, I took care of my mother. I tried to take care of my mother, and I actually felt guilty for leaving because mm. – my older brothers with their addiction problems didn't, you know, they couldn't do simple things. Like it was a struggle to do anything down there. So, you know, it was to the point where I actually had to go. I mean, it was one of those things. It was like a make it or break it type thing. And if I didn't go, I probably wouldn't have made it. So anyway, so my mother passed and it really devastated me. Um, so I, I came as actually I, uh, something related to that. I actually, the three, four months, after she passed, she passed in the second semester of that year. So she passed in January of that year. So from January until maybe April or May was really a really, really rough time for me spiritually. Um, and that actually led to a couple of attachments, one negative and one positive. So. Looks like we lost his audio again. Um, you know, it's, I'm just going to speak when he comes back, I'll be quiet. I'll, I'll shut up. But uh You know, I mean, I, you know, when I hear people say that they've, you know, oh, we're back. Oh, uh, can you, your audio cut out again? Can you repeat like the last 20 seconds of what you were saying? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, So, so I was dating a a woman at the time and she's actually in the book. Um, She was a psychic witch uh, at the time. and She was able to channel my mother and I'll never forget this. This was a, it was in April and uh it, you could feel her i mean i cried because i could feel it was my mother there was no doubt that this was my mother coming through um it was beautiful it was uplift it was sad but i could feel that and the other experience that around the same time is i had a uh being a man <laughs> uh you know we don't go to the doctor or the dentist for anything unless it's like have to and i've almost actually died because of that and that's yet mm. another story for later oh, it's a learning uh, lesson so <laughs> so so this time i actually had a bad tooth that i was neglecting and it hurt and it was killing me so being a college student young and stupid i decided hey let's take tylenol and chase it with beer all night oh my so god so <laughs> i was just in so much pa- yeah i was in so much pain and then I heard this voice out of nowhere say, Kevin, like really sharp. And hmm. I knew it was my mother. And, and I stopped and I said, Mom. And I was able to go to sleep. And the pain wow. went away. And I went Did to the, you recognize it? Was, oh, yeah. Oh, it was you recognize it as, it was, oh, my it was, gosh. It was, it was my, she came back to basically shut me up. And cause I couldn't sleep because the pain was so bad. But I was, like I said, being stupid. I was chasing beer 
or, or chasing Tylenol with beer. And she yeah, came through yeah. and, you know, so uh, that was definitely her. And, and I'll never forget that because I was able to sleep finally. Uh, maybe that was a combination of the beer and the, and the pills finally kicking <laughs> in at four in the morning. But Maybe all three too, you know. Regardless, but yeah, I'll never forget that. It was just, it was, it was her, clearly her. And, and, and that was really profound because I, I actually found out later on doing studies, and I didn't know this, is that, and I, I firmly believe this, is that depending on what you are and who you are and what you've done, you're only limited time here. Then you go into something else. So she was only here for a little while and she's passed over now. And I, every once in a while, she, I, I, I can feel her checking on me, but she's kind of way in the background now. But she's 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 in a better place now. And I do know that. So that's fantastic. Um, and that's probably her message yeah. for you now when yeah. she and I know this might be different. Maybe it's similar too for many people. But when you do sense her coming through, what does that how do you know it's her as opposed to? another entity um i will see pictures of her in my mind oh, okay they're, they're mm-hmm. pictures of her when before i was born before she even knew my father and she was a very oh. beautiful woman so it's from wow. when she was she was a youth and she was like i said i everybody that ever sees pictures of her says she was a beautiful woman and of course you know unfortunately alcohol destroyed her so when she died she looked nothing like she did when she was 25 so but she's I'll free of her. that now. Yes, she's she's happy and she's in a peaceful place now. And all that pain and, and everything that she went through is gone now. That's fantastic. I'll, I'll see I'll see her in my mind's eye as a as a young younger woman. Oh, that's so fantastic. That's yeah. very interesting. Um, yeah, because some people, I mean, sometimes I'll see like like I'll know when my grandmother comes through or like my grandfather. Uh, sometimes I'll see them like in my mind's eye, like you do. Other right. times it's just it's just that all knowing sense, I guess. It's Absolutely. kind of hard to put in words. Um, but so all of these experiences, I mean, this is a little bit of a backstory to obviously why you became uh, an addiction recovery counselor. That's very commendable work. Uh, what do you have any specific advice for those that are grieving the loss of a loved one? Um, I would just say uh, know that they're never gone for sure always right. uh, again they, they never go away um right. i know that you know, obviously with different religions and and, and mm-hmm. belief systems and that's fine and that's totally understandable but spirits are always here spirits are always amongst amongst us your loved ones do know what you're doing and they are they they are around you no matter what um so i i would just for me i would say like i said it's a, it's a learning experience but they're, they're never gone they're never they're they're just moving this this body is a vessel and their right. soul moves on to something else. So they're always with you. Absolutely. I completely agree. And, you know, there's things that people can do too to help with their grief. Is there anything in specific, specifically that you did after the loss of your mom that really helped you kind of move through her, her passing? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's I different for I, everyone. Yeah, I unfortunately drank a lot. You know and, what? And I'll, I I'll, mean, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll admit that I, 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 Basically, yeah. I mean, I I was battling the bottle before that, and it just increased until I knew this wasn't the right thing. And then I put it down. But I actually had a I had at the time, like I said, I had a good support system of friends and not so much family, but friends. Awesome. Uh, My girlfriend, like at the time, like I said, the psychic witch helped me through a lot of that. And again, with her knowing things and being able to tell me things and channel things and everything. And she actually was starting to teach me about the paranormal, a lot of the things. Interesting. So that, that, that helped me too, because I got to understand, Hey, she's not really gone. She's just over here. Right. Her soul remains with me and I can feel this. And at the time I was actually living in a haunted house too. So that actually helped. I actually had a resident spirit in the house I was in. So <laughs> that was, you know, that taught me yeah. a lot. So everything uh, happens for a reason and people come yeah. into our lives for a reason. Some stay, some yeah. go, but um, honestly, my one advice piece of advice to people would be don't, you know, seek out somebody to talk to. Don't yeah. hold it in. Cause grief will kill. Honestly, oh, yeah. grief can kill if you let it. So if you have a loved one or a person or a counselor or somebody you trust, um, you know, t- talk to them. 
you know, don't leave it shut up. Don't don't sit in the dark by yourself and drink or, or do heroin or do whatever negative stuff because that you know that's that's destructive behavior. Talk to people, you know, in this day and age where things have changed, people are opening up more. Looks like we lost his audio again, but this is very uh, salient advice. Again, I'll shut up when he comes back, but. <laughs> But, uh, you know, it's very important. Obviously, you know, uh, drinking is obviously destructive, as he admitted. But, uh, you know, oh, are you back? Yes. I okay, you I cut am. out again. So I'm sorry. I, yeah, I, I, I did. I just looked That's at okay. the little, little yellow bars up there. Yeah, I no worries. I said, can we just wait? But yeah. I can't, just, <laughs> I can't. This happens all the time. That's okay. I, I kind of filled in. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so... But really, really good advice. I mean, it's sometimes easier to like want to just like, and I've been there myself. I think all of us have been there, you know, have had kind of what I call the dark night of the soul from what, from not just from a death, it could be from any experience in life. And it's sometimes easier to just want to sit in your room and just kind of like perseverate on things. But sometimes it's hard for people to reach out, but that does help. Um, So really, really good advice. So being an addiction counselor, this is uh, something I wanted to ask you. How, do you incorporate a lot of your training as an addiction counselor in your paranormal research investigations? Uh, yeah, actually, I do. Um, and, and one of the things, that, the technique that I use is I talk because, I, I, you know, you, uh, spirits are spirits, but they were human at one time. So of they're course. just like basically talking to your invisible brother, right? right? So basically treat them like, you know, don't, you know, you don't have to scream at them or yell at them or what. You know, they're there. They they understand you. So basically my thing is just treat them like, a, like I treat a client. I sit there, hey, you need to talk. You need to process. Sit down. Let's talk. And that's what I usually do is, I, is what I do is when I'm on an investigation, I'll introduce myself. I'll say what I'm here for and I'll hit the record button and just let it go. So I just let them do the talking. So. Um, and I, I figure, like I said, and, and and I've learned one thing in this field is that a lot of people don't want to don't want to stop to listen. They want to talk. They want to hear themselves. I work with people like that. Yeah. They yeah. just need to shut up for five minutes and let them talk and let them process. It's not about the counselor. It's about your client sitting in front of you. And a lot of people seem to forget that. And I think on the investigation, the same thing, because it drives me crazy when you see these people do these EVP sessions. And they're cut like two seconds. They're asking another question. Well, who can yeah, answer anything yeah. in that? You know, and it's that's, just, I understand yeah. there's a, the EVP burst session or whatever it's called. I get that. But still, if, if you were in a counseling session and I kept cutting you out and I've seen this done, you're going to get frustrated and walk away from me. So exactly. it's the same thing in the spirit world. Shut up and let them talk. <laughs> I mean, that would, that's kind of that. That's kind of my advice. But yeah, I, I, I try to incorporate that. And that's kind of how I do things. And a lot of people are receptive to it. I, I've I learned a lot of younger males in my field, client, younger male clients respect the fact that I just let them talk. Uh, that, you know, that's that. good advice. So, Cause you know, I, I've, I think we've all been there where it's, you know, you turn on the recorder and you're like, okay, so uh, one of the first questions may be uh, who's in the room with us, make yourself known two seconds later, what's your name, two seconds later, like all these. And, and sometimes yes. it, it, it becomes almost like an interrogative interview. Right. And so one thing that works well for me, and it looks like you do this, is, is making it more discussion-based. So yes. it's not always, you know, me kind of being intrusive, but just in a friendly, warm manner, you know, ask some interesting questions explaining to the energies why uh you know you're there and you want to hear their story and all of that um but yeah i mean it's i would say what works best for me is probably about 10 to 15 seconds in between questions i don't know what you've yes. done yes. but yeah because it yeah. how many times have i mean i've this has happened to me where i'll <laughs> i'll ask a question and then maybe i ask the next one a little too soon and right when I'm asking it, there's a response. So I'm like, oh, exactly. my gosh. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's, and yeah. then, uh, yeah. And it's like, it's you know, would you go up to a stranger that you don't know and just start, you know, being intrusive, wanting to know all about their life? You know what I mean? Like, it's absolutely it's, no, that, that's true. And like I said, I, you know, a lot of these ghost shows, I don't take much stock in anyway. 
but that's for another day. But that yeah. really just burns me when I watch these people do that. It's just like, come on. You expect to have results after all that? I wouldn't I know. talk to you either. I, I, I know. <laughs> you, I know. You can ask questions like that and do things like that, but what are you going to do? Yeah, I think, you know, for the, the shows, and, you know, I've said this before numerous times, you know, it, they're mainly for entertainment. That's it. Yep. And News, entertainment, rate. We have to remember that. There's some positives, absolutely. you know, in terms no, of absolutely. seeing oh, yeah. the location. Absolutely. And I mean, I, I'm sure you know people that are on these shows. I do too. Mm-hmm. Fantastic researchers, mm-hmm. but you have to remember they are for entertainment. So, absolutely. But uh, so you mentioned sometimes the energies like to kind of get involved when you do radio shows and such. Do you feel that? the spirit world in general is more drawn to you because of what you do as a profession, but maybe some of your uh, experiences growing up. Um, yeah, I think it's a little bit of everything. Um, I'm empathic. So yeah. I think that's mm-hmm. something, and that's something that I found out from a shaman friend of mine. Um, Great. You know, who, who I actually was talking to about, experiences and I didn't understand and he he kind of laid it out for me and he and you know it's crazy because some of the stuff that he was telling me I kind of just was I kind of put in my back pocket and then happened yeah and he was like you remember when I told you and I was like that was like 15 years ago man I do remember and he was like <laughs> well and I said look man I didn't mean to doubt you but yeah anyway so yeah uh, a shaman friend told me about a lot of the things he says he says yeah you've got a gift I said this is why this is happening you need to cultivate it mm-hmm. so I've I, I've tried to do that and, and again I, I I need to meditate more and that's yes. one thing that I've always yes. wanted to try to do better is meditate me too um, because I, I I do want to open myself up more. Uh, but no, I, like I said, I, I just, just random things during the day. I mean, I can be on the phone talking to somebody and something will come through yeah, or something will happen. And it's just, yeah, it's just whenever they want to communicate, they, they let me know. And, and, and I have to respect that. I don't always know who they are, but they, they have, a, have a way of doing that. So, uh, yeah. And it, it happens at work. It happens here. It happens at my girlfriend's house. It happens wherever, usually wherever I am, if they want to communicate, they'll find a way. That's awesome. I mean, it's, I don't know. It just brings a smile to my face. I think being empathic, I I am too. I think many people are. And sometimes it's hard for those that are empathic to not, if they're, if they're not really aware of it, they may confuse maybe a, a spirit's energy with that of their own. So it's hard to distinguish, you know, your own emotions from someone else's, but you know, I think, and I'm going to say this, I think it's a blessing and a curse to be empathic. Absolutely. I think it's more more of a beautiful thing than not. Um, you know, Absolutely. but it's just, we just have to be patient with ourselves and just, you know, like you said, it's a gift and further hone it. And so, but I was going to ask you earlier if you think you're empathic. And of course, yeah, because in talking with you, I'm like, I kind of glean that. So. Yeah, um, like I said, with my ex-girlfriend, I'm still in contact with the, the witch, psychic witch. That was one thing that she said is a blessing and a curse because she's like, you know, I love giving people good advice. But when I see the bad stuff, I don't want to do that. And I said, well, I understand yeah. that. So I, I didn't understand it then, but I understand it better now. Right. Of course. Yeah. Being you know, sensitive, it's, it's, too. It's is the balance. You know, it is the balance. Yang, yep. You know. Absolutely. So I want to hear about your book. I mean. I've told you this before. I think it was when you were on Haunted Voices Radio way back, I think a few months ago. Uh, Ghosts and Me, I love the cover. And I've just started reading the first few chapters. Fantastic book. It's amazing. So um, I know a little bit about it just because I've read. I'm about it, almost done with chapter four. Uh, but what, I mean, obviously, we've already kind of touched on this, but uh, what motivated you to write it and uh for someone that doesn't know about it how would you describe the book and maybe like a few sentences sure um, and what it's like main what its main message is like what you want sure. the audience to to know from it sure uh well basically what what i wanted to get, get out of this book is, is first of all i always wanted to be a writer and my 12th grade english teacher god bless her uh, i don't know whatever happened to charlotte charlotte edmonds 
but she was the one who first said, you're going to be a, a writer. And I was like, nah, whatever. I, I've written some story for extra credit. It was crap. She saw something in me and she said, no, Kevin, you're going to be a writer. I can feel that it. is awesome. I, mean, something. I don't know, but yeah, that's so always kind of prophetic. But um, what I wanted to do is because I consider myself above average intelligence and I've had all these experiences and there was nothing to do with them. But I, you know, I, I, I wanted to show people, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm, Okay, I'm not crazy. I'm an average guy. I have above average intelligence, but all these things happen to me. And like, there's so many people out here that are the same as me. Hey, look at me. This is what I'm going through. There's a lot of people out there doing the same thing, and it's okay, you know, because we're all out here. And and again, believe me, I still get the side glances and the oh, okay, yeah, sure, okay, yeah, we'll stay away from this guy. <laughs> you know, back west. You know, but it's really funny because I'll, I'll talk about people at work. Well, we'll you know, and, and there's a lot of people that I work with that don't believe in this stuff. But yet when I'm alone, oh, hey, Kevin, I just want to let you know this happened to me, blah, blah. And I said, uh, yeah, there right. You go. There, yeah. Yes. Been there, you done know, so that. I, so, so I get that a lot. But when there's a group of people, you know, oh, well, I don't know. No, no, yeah, yeah, whatever. OK, sure, yeah, you just keep away from the crazy guy. <laughs> So, so my, my, really my message is, and, and this was a journey of almost 15 years from first word written to publication. So it meant a lot to me because oh, wow. this was a lifelong goal and I finally achieved it. Now I, I had gotten some other offers prior, but they weren't any good. And I just want to say while I'm on the subject, thank, thank Ozark mountain publishing for making my dream come true. Oh. Um, they're, they're a great publication. I don't know if any of your audience is familiar with Dolores Cannon, um, but she's a fascinating mm-hmm. woman. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. she passed before I was published by her. This is her baby, but I've, I've watched her videos. I suggest anybody that wants to learn some things, watch her videos because she's fascinating. Really, really good woman. Awesome. Uh, I would have loved to meet her. Um, but also, um, so basically my message is it's okay. Like there are so many people out there and I want people to convey that message that, hey, you know, I may be different but it's okay to be different. I've experienced these things because I think a lot of people have held it in so long. Right. And and that's one thing about the ghost shows that I will credit that is because I think they kind of kicked the door open a little bit. They did. Yes. Because you Mm -hmm. remember back in 2009, 2010, when they started getting popular, it become, it's almost become mainstream. Oh yeah. I'll, I'll see news stories now with with spirits and UFOs and when they're serious, they're not joking. They're not Halloween fodder. Right. And I was like, wow. So, so I, I credit that for that. But I think a lot of people go through these things. And they have nowhere to turn, no alternative. So I wanted to say, hey, look at me. I'm just an average person that's using these gifts. I've embraced these gifts. And believe me, I go out. I my my girlfriend is a uh, she's a she's a preacher's daughter. Oh, interesting. So, yeah. So she, I'm trying to teach her these things, and unfortunately, because they follow me. They've stayed with her. So she'll have crazy stuff going on in her house and, and be like, what do you got going on over here? And I'll tell her, I said, I'm sorry that, you know, so she's had stuff when she started and I said, it's me because you started, you know, when we started dating, all this stuff happened. So she read my book and weird stuff happened in the house. So that was kind of neat because she was like, you know, she'd call me up because we live in different States. Right. So she'd call me up and be like, what the hell are you doing to me? I was reading your book and my lamp blew up. Or the door closed and nobody's here. Or I'm hearing footsteps downstairs and I'll just say, oh, put it down. But you know what? It's funny because she's not the only person who said that. There's actually been a couple of people who have been reading my book that have had things happen to them while they're reading. Right. So it's, it's like, like once like, you like submerge yourself or submerge yeah. so, or submerge. So, so that's actually, maybe I should use that as a marketing tool, you know? It's yeah. It's like an interactive thing, right? You read right. my book, ghost stuff happens to you. I mean, the title says it all. I mean, Ghosts and Me. I mean, the title's fantastic. I love it. Great cover, too. I mean, it's just, it's very well written and very engaging. You know how you read you. some books and it's like, you're like, oh, I don't want to read anymore, but I want to. But yours is just like, yes. you know, it's like a seamless transition from page Thank to page. And, and, yeah, and, and, I have, and I've been told it's an easy read. Which yeah. Is good because yeah. Then mm-hmm. anybody can read it. They don't have to be phd or, or whatever they can just write it up and and it's good and, and again i appreciate that because again that and you know that that's kind of my message is like i said we're all the same we all have these mm-hmm. things going on right and the spirit world's okay and and that's kind of the message that i want to convey to people and also don't ever give up on a dream because like i said this was a 15 year process for me i, I never gave 
lost his audio again, but yeah, pretty much. I mean, this is great. I mean, when you have an author that has a passion to uh, write about a subject, I mean, you can tell. I don't know. Are you back? <laughs> I was kind of uh, like, no, no, um, no, don't worry about it. It happens all the time. I want to hear that message. No, no, but no, repeat it. It's okay. This is, yeah. This is- Go this for is, it. This is very cliche, but I, I've bled, sweated, and cried when I wrote this book. Oh, yeah. This is the truth. And, yeah. Uh, so, again, that, that's another message is, is follow your dreams. Never give up on your dreams, whatever, how small or how big, chase them. Because Absolutely. I'm positive that you will you will achieve them if you work hard enough. And speaking of which, I almost did not come to fruition with this book. I almost died, by the way. Oh my uh, goodness! Came, the, the week the week what? it came out, I had a heart attack. Yes, the week it was released, I had a heart attack, which was the Widowmaker. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Oh yes, I I just yeah. read about that the other day. Oh my gosh! I had, I had the Widowmaker while I was in the hospital. My book oh came my out in, e, in, in e form. So oh something my wanted me. Yeah, something wanted me out there to to say, hey, whatever, because I survived. And this was after after two two hours of at work thinking I had indigestion before I even called the right. ambulance. See? Oh my God. So my you are lucky. Like, yeah, my doctor was like, Kevin, you you you're not supposed I shouldn't be talking to you right now. He said well, you need to straighten up. Because I was a two and a half pack a day smoker. I didn't eat right. A lot of coffee. I work nights, a lot of coffee and sugar. So I can also say I'm proud I'm almost two years nicotine free. Oh my so, god! Yay! That's awesome. That. Thank you. But yeah, I, I, I yeah. almost died. I <gasps> almost died, and, and and that's that's something that sticks with me a little because something I, they're not done with me, but no. I should have been dead, mm-hmm. and that sticks with me. Like my God, I could have been my ghost on Ghosts and Me. That would have been me, you know. And I talk and I joke about that, but people are like, <laughs> "That's true." And I was like, "Yeah, I know." Unfortunately. But, oh my gosh, I'm so glad yeah. you're still here. Did you have yeah. any sort of like near death experience at all that you can recall? Yeah, or? See, that's the thing is I didn't. There was nobody that visited me. There was no white light. There was nothing. Interesting. There was just but you know the weird thing is that the only thing that did happen is that I had come to while they were working on me, I, I had come to re- realize in my mind, if I have to go, I'm okay. Like okay, I was ready so, to go. So but I was, that I was is... total at peace. I was like, if, I, if, if I'm done, mm-hmm. I'm done. And I was okay with that. You hear that. That, that is actually a classic example of what oh, people it? okay. do. It's okay, one okay, of them so I, where people I, will okay, be at peace. I didn't see, I didn't see the love, loved ones around the bed or <clears throat> but the white light the, or anything. But I had the peace of, hey, if, I, if I have to go, I'm okay. That's amazing. I mean, how long were they working so, on you? Gosh, they put in a catheter, so. Oh, my gosh. gosh. 15, 15, 20 minutes, maybe. And I was awake for the whole procedure. I watched the whole thing. Oh, so you weren't legally declared, like, okay, so maybe that's. I heard the whole thing. I watched that this big monitor where the doctor was doing the procedure, and I watched it right along with him while he was putting the catheter in my heart. Oh, my gosh. I am so glad that you're still here. And, you know, there are some tough lessons in life that, you know, I mean, it's. Absolutely, but. A wake yeah. up call. Yeah, definitely. So, um, yeah, there's that. <laughs> so, yeah, I, there is but, that. Yes, but yeah, but that to me, it, it just shows that I was I was destined for something more. Right, of course. And and I'm not taking that for granted. So, and it's interesting that that happened right when one of your lifelong dreams actually came to be. That I find yeah. very mis. Almost, um, what's the word? Not mysterious, um, mystical. I guess I don't know yeah. what the right word is, yeah. but that's pretty. Yeah. And, and I didn't gosh. find that out until I left the hospital. That my right. that the e, e version of my book. I didn't. The Ozark Mountain didn't tell me, so I had no oh idea my gosh. Oh that my, my book was even out until I actually found it. Right. And then somebody said, "Hey, you know your book's out on e version." And I was like, "No." Ah, I'm they sure. didn't. Oh my so, gosh. so the e version came out before the print version. Mm-hmm. And it was the week that I was, was actually, as a matter of fact, the day that I had to the attack, day. That, oh my gosh. Day, that's when I was in the hot, when I was in the hospital, it was released. And yeah. Oh, wow. that there, that there's a message in that. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's that, absolutely so a very, that, a that beautiful was, message. That was kind of, that was kind of crazy. <laughs> oh like my said, it was gosh. Released the day I had my heart attack. So. Oh my God. Oh, I just like, Oh, I say this all the time on the show. I'm like, I have goosebumps. Oh my gosh. So where can people, I know Amazon, but uh, where else is the book sold? Uh, Ozark Mountain, 
uh, publishing. You can go okay. to ozarkmountain.com. Um, my author's page is there as well. Um, I also have it in um, audio form now. Oh. And, uh, I hear that is very popular. And the it gentleman, uh, Nick Gallagher, who reads it, has a very great voice. And, and I love the way he his inflection is with the story. And it's still, it's just still mind blowing when I listen to this thinking, wow, those are my words coming out of this guy's mouth. You know, that's still to this day, just amazes me that this is me, you know, you can't take that away, but this is just so cool that, you know, this is my words, but this is, he's speaking this, this Hollywood actor is. That is this, fantastic. But, uh, did yeah, your publishing so, company arrange that audiobook, or did you go kind of off on your own to do this? No, they, they did it all. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Some publishing companies yeah. aren't on the bandwagon yet. Some are, but yeah, they're, they're very popular audiobooks. And another yeah. thing I wanted, I was actually saying this a few moments ago when, when you cut out is that, you know, when you're a reader and you have a book in your hands, whether it's on Kindle or it's the actual book in your hands, you can tell the, from the author whether or not that author has passion for what's written. And Absolutely. I can tell with, with yours that there's a lot of passion and a lot of heart that went in it. And that's another reason why, you know, it's like I can't put it down. So Awesome. Well, I hope... Uh... A lot more people feel the same way as you do. So um, yeah, let me see. So Walmart.com, I believe, has it. BarnesandNoble.com has it. Any .com that sells books, I think you can pretty much get it. Uh, awesome. So you can get it. Uh, it, it. But obviously, Amazon and Ozark Mountain are two of the, I think, more, more popular uh, mm-hmm. venues to, to get either one. But right. I suggest yeah. Get, get actually get all of them. Get all three. Get yeah. The book, get the regular one and get the audio book. Why not? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Are you planning any signings at all? Like Barnes and Noble uh, signings? Yeah, I've actually, I did some before COVID hit. Great. Um, so I, I was trying to line some up now that COVID's done. Um, I, I don't, I'm, there's a lot of things going on right now in, in my life right. personally. So I'm going to kind of wait till the dust settles a little bit, but um, yeah, yeah, I would love to do signings or talks or whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm in the process of building a personal website. Oh, um, fantastic. To, to, uh, to do that. Cause I, I love, I, like I said, that's why I love these shows. I, I love giving talks. So I, yeah. hey, you know, you know, if you guys want, want some paranormal, uh, talk, you know, I'm, 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 I'm your guy. So. Absolutely. And uh, uh, check so, with your yeah. local libraries too, because I, I've done a lot yeah. of local San Diego, um, you know, events myself, but check your, your local libraries and just even like local businesses may want to have you in there to talk. Absolutely. Um, so, um, so we have about seven minutes left in the show. I know it goes by super fast. What would you like to see change or improve in the field of paranormal research? Mm, that's a great question. I like to ask um, it because I like to get people's opinion. I mean, you know, you know, I, and I know this is probably overdone, but I think it needs to be said because I still see this. I go through this myself, and it's it's frustrating. Is this whole pair unity talk? I know it's been going on and, for years. And, 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 you know, and that's the thing is, like I said, I, I actually belong to a, a, a ghost club or whatever you want to call it, haunted, whatever mm-hmm. uh, page on, on Facebook. And these people are always complaining that, Hey, I post a picture and people are negatively like making fun of me. And, and why are you even with that? If that's how you're going to be, what is the point of, of you signing up for something like that? If you're just going to like be, so he cut out again, but yeah, I mean, it's this whole pair unity uh, concept has been uh, tossed around for, I mean, years. And it's like, I think we first have to define what unity is. What is the def- Yeah, just, okay. You, yeah. Sorry, you cut out again. Repeat the yeah, last I, 10 seconds. I, yeah, I know. Um, no, no so worries. I, I would it's like all good. To, you know, like I said, I, I watch these shows and, and, and this is the one thing that I, that I, I talk about. And this is one thing that frustrates me is, is because, you know, I've actually had people tell me, I actually had this person tell me on another show that, oh, you don't know what you're talking about because so-and-so said this. It was somebody famous on the TV with the ghost show. And I was oh like, my gosh. you're kidding me. Oh, so I ripped her apart because I was like, look, lady, you're, you're an idiot. I said, read my book. I said, because I'm not this person over here, but because you're in love with this guy who's on whatever day it was. We're we're in the same boat here. I do the same thing this guy does. I just wrote mm-hmm. it. 
Mm-hmm. But yeah, she was she just she was just adamant because this guy was, oh my god, you know, and she wouldn't listen to anything I said. I said, look. So I gave up on. I was like, get get rid of her because I, I couldn't do it. So I've run into that, and that's frustrating because again, what they do on TV, I've already done. I do the same thing. I may not be this good. You may not know me. I'm trying to get my name out there, or whatever. But it's the same thing, and it's just like we're all in the same boat, trying to do the same thing. And yeah, I think there's need, just because we're not on TV doesn't mean we're any better or any worse than anybody who's not. Or who exactly. Is, so. Exactly. And I think we all need to define what unity is. OK, what is unity in terms of psychical research? What is that? Right. Because it's a very right. subjective. But, um, you know, I think as long as there is going to be competition, ego and, you know, almost treating the spirit world and other interdimensional beings like it's a circus show for our entertainment as long as there's going to be that i don't know so yeah you you know i have to go go around it because i think you're right because like i said this is all theory based and nobody does understand that because there's nothing been proven beyond a shadow of a doubt I can't take this in the laboratory and prove x plus y equals ghost i mean (laughs) i wish i could but this is all theory based. But what is amazing is that they actually have, you know, some of the, the, the brains back in the day uh, were, were working on on these kinds of things like Einstein. You know, he mm-hmm. believed in the Tesla thing. They, yes. they were building machines to talk yeah. to the spirit world. So, you know, there's that. But, yeah, this isn't an, this isn't an exact science. But I, I would just like to see more of us, like I said, and, and I, I think you've noticed as well as I have. And I've, I've talked to a lot of paranormal people is that with what's what's going on in the world the last five, 10 years, there is an explosion of activity and things yes. are happening. Why yes. we don't know, but there's believe me, there's enough of a pie out there for everybody to try and it, get a slice from. That's true. That's and, very and true. And it's like I said, you know, and it's one thing, like I said, uh, it's, it's a little frustrating to me is that I've reached out when I do these shows, I give my email address. I said, Hey man, I, I'll talk to anybody about anything. Right. I've had like a, a handful of people email me, so I don't know if they just don't like me or what. But it's just the idea that you know you put yourself out there and you and you want to help people and want to talk, and, and they don't take you up on it. It's just kind of like, you know, yeah, so. I think some of it is too is people just get kind of busy with their own lives. You know, mm-hmm. just keep doing what you're doing. Associate with the people that you know you trust and enjoy working with and um i i would like for me i would like to see the field kind of go back into more of an academic sort of spectrum yes. as opposed to being more in the entertainment realm that's a whole nother uh, discussion Absolutely. for another time but uh we are kind of getting out of time for tonight i would love to have you back on in the future to continue this discussion oh, because would, there's a lot more show again yeah absolutely so we'll definitely schedule that thank you so much for coming on and, and sharing you your story me. Uh, please, uh, guys, uh, pick up Kevin's book, Ghosts and Me. It's a fantastic read. You can get it on pretty much everywhere uh, books are sold in print, uh, ebook, and audio uh, uh, format. So thank you again for coming on tonight. Next week's guest is going to be Lon Strickler from, from Phantoms and Monsters. So looking forward to uh, Phantoms and Monsters blog, I should say. So looking forward to having him on uh hope everyone has a good night and upcoming weekend and as i always say here at the afterlife chronicles we're bridging the gap between mortality and the afterlife one experience at a time good night folks